start. So I'm here with Mr. Marquez Jacobs. Mr. Go. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> How you doing, man? Uh, thank you so much for taking the time. I'm good, man. I appreciate it too, man. Um, I'm gonna have to put my dog in the cage. Hold on. Oh, okay. he's gonna go crazy. Come on, get in the cage. Was that a pit bull? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Now, hopefully, he won't start barking. If he do, then I'm gonna have to go back in the room. But what's good, though? Man, uh, chilling. Uh, man, uh, I love connecting with people from Detroit because it's like you know the sister city. Like you know, I'm from Chicago, so like you know the Midwest. Always like got a lot of love for Detroit. I remember the first time I went there. Uh, did you grow up in Detroit? You say you went the first time you went there. You did what now? So the very first time I, I remember the very first time I went there was like we went on we went on a trip to like Canada. My parents took us to Canada, and we okay. had to drive through Detroit. And like you know, what I mean, I remember like you know seeing like all these abandoned buildings. That was like the first time like seeing Detroit. I was like, oh, like this, this is crazy. <laughs> well. I mean, so if that's how you picture Detroit, guess how I picture Chicago. <laughs> how you picture every, Chicago? Every time I watch Good Times, when I watch Good Times, I think of Cabrini Greens and like high rise apartment, you know, like apartment buildings that y'all for y'all projects. That's what I think about Chicago. I've never been there before, though. I mean, I think I think Good Times was an accurate depiction, you know, of it at that time, you know, and stuff, everything like um. My upbringing was a little bit different. I think, like, you know, there's different, like, aspects of Chicago, different parts and stuff of the city, you know what I mean? Which I imagine, I, I know there is in Detroit, you know, too. Like, yeah. Um, but, like, that was my first, like, you know, uh, experience in Detroit. And, like, it was, like, I was blown because it was, like, I was, like, 13. I remember 13 or 14, and it was before Eminem, it blew up. But I just got this, this uh, cassette tape. And it had like early Eminem. I was like listening to it, like as I was going through like all these abandoned buildings and stuff. So like I always right. remember that. And then like you know he became like he ended up getting a deal with Dre and becoming like a national name and stuff and everything. I was like, <laughs> you know, but uh, he he did a good description of like I think in his music of like kind of like describing Detroit. You know. Well, the thing the thing about Detroit when you say. Who, who do you who do you who are you saying you think gave a good description in de describing Detroit? Well, uh, Eminem, like uh, a lot of other artists. I mean, I would say like uh, I love like a lot of Detroit artists. You know, you could say Guilty Simpsons. You could say uh, Illa J. You could say you know, um, man, uh, Black Milk. You know, yeah. a lot of like you know like artists that have gave like you know a pretty like you know good description of Detroit. Well, Detroit, Detroit, man, a lot of people that describe Detroit, um, I think, I really can't say because I haven't listened to the interviews, but I would assume that a lot of people are really coming from like a more younger vantage point. Yeah. Like you, you really, you don't really meet people that's going to talk about the black bottom, you know what I'm saying? Or understand the origins of the black bottom from Shane and like 94 all the way downtown. I mean, like knowing, understanding these areas, knowing the cast quarter, knowing that it was a Chinatown in Detroit. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't just Southwest Detroit, which was considered for the Mexicans, but we had a Chinatown too down by cast quarter. So, I mean, it was, it's a lot of stuff that's no longer in Detroit. So our history is, is rapidly, we're losing it. Why, why is that? Do you think that's like because of gentrification? Because I hear a lot about like that, like, you know, how like they're they're putting a lot of money, you know, particularly like, you know, uh, the Asian community or China. That's what I've heard. Like investors, they're buying up like the downtown area. And like, you know. Um... The, the thing about the thing about the gentrification is it shows us how slow we are as a, 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 na a nation of people. We're very slow when, we, when things are being strategized around us and we don't, we don't recognize the strategy. We don't recognize the, the nefarious plots that are being um, employed around us daily. I mean, when you stay in the inner city of a, a, a when you stay in the inner city of a, 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 hold on one minute, let me, let me, let me, let me do something right quick. I got to stop him from barking. Okay. And the only way I'm going to do that is to let him back out. And then I'll just go back where I was at. I'm, I apologize for that, man. Oh, no, but uh, this is my beast right here. Shut up. <laughs> Come on. Look at him. Man, I, um, one of my favorite writers, yeah. Donald, Donald Goins, too. I read a lot of his book. And he gives, like, a pretty, like, you know, Move. like, uh, just like. Get out of, come here. Get out of here. 
Get out. Go on. Go on. Yeah, Donald Goins, I'm with you. Yeah, just like as far as like an ac accurate, like, you know, portrayal. I mean, it seems so realistic of like how Detroit was at that period. And like, I know he was from Detroit and stuff and everything. Even though those are fiction books and stuff, you get an idea like, you know, like this is this is Detroit. Well, actually, Donald Goins' books weren't really fiction. It was like maybe like a mixture of fiction right. and actual reality because, I mean, like, um, you know, I did a lot of prison time. So I did prison time with... Um, a, a guy who was was uh, his story was being depicted in one of uh, Donald Goins' books. His case, the the, the the way they caught their case, everything that they did in their case, Donald Goins wrote about it in the book. It was a part of the book where they they went out to the air, airport. And they act like they were they worked at the airport and they were planning a robbery. That's that's so. This guy who was in prison with us. That was his case. So Donald Goins. He would hear guys' stories on the yard, and that's what he would write about in his book. So that's why I say they weren't all the way just fiction. They, a lot of them had reality in it. He mixed it. He would mix it so that, you know, names and places would be different, but he would be talking about people's lives that he had heard about while he was incarcerated. And, yeah, and part, I think, I think he was talking uh, about El, Eldorado, life as well. El Dorado Red, I think that's the name of that book. If yeah. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, man. Like, uh, Well, I mean, he got, you know, he got a host of books. Horse yeah. son, uh, 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 pimp. Uh, I don't know what pimp is. Um, pimp is a uh, uh, um, uh, slim iceberg slim. Yeah. Um, but iceberg slim was another writer too. You yeah. know, they, they, ice, yeah, iceberg slim. Yeah, that's, I love, that's another I love iceberg slim. I've read iceberg slim. Uh, he doesn't have as many books as Donald Goins. I think he only yeah. has like a, a few books, like two, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but he, they, like, they classics though. They classics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they classics. Yeah, Donald Goins, uh, Horse Son. That was the last uh, Donald Goins book I read, and like it, it was really good. Like you know, because it's about like heroin and like you know how like pretty much like ravaged like you know like the community, and you had like girls like having sex like with animals, man, and like you know uh, that's like a, a real thing. Like I guess like you know and stuff that like like dope dealers because they would, they would have like so much control over the women, like, you know, it'd be like, yo, you're going to fuck my dog. Like, <laughs> I was like, yeah. wow. Yeah, actually, actually, there's a movie out right now on uh, Tubi called Sloppy Seconds. They just took it off briefly because of the outrage in which there's a scene where the guy has a cane corso eat this girl pussy. And so, like, the way that they did it in the movie, a lot of people complained about that. And they were saying, you know, they just complained about it to where they took it down, and they, now they put it back up, and they, I think that it's called the theatrical version. So they probably what they probably did was cut that scene out. I'm not sure. I haven't I haven't rewatched it. I watched it the first time. I saw the dog scene, and it was just like, um, like you said. I mean, you know, that's it was that was common. That was so common back when you know guys were you know selling dope in the '90s when you know like being like trying to be like Nino Brown with a Rottweiler, you know what I'm saying? Had pit bulls and, you know, the bigger the dog, the, the more bulkier the dog, the more aggressive you look. You know, motherfuckers try to talk through their animals. They talk through their clothes, their animals, their cars, and their cribs. That's what they talk through. I, I, I'm going to talk shit through what I got. So I got the biggest dog, or I got the most expensive, smallest English bulldog, you know what I'm saying? French bulldog, whatever. I want, you know, it, it, whatever I got on, it, it shows that I'm expensive. Louis Vuitton sandals, uh, 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 Air Jordans. I mean, everything that we talking about is, is name brand shit. If it ain't name brand shit, like really in the black community, what matters? But even more so than talking about that, man, <clears throat> because I, I mean, all that is important. But if I'm a, if I'm gonna spend time to talk to you, man, I, I really, I really need you to know that you that you dealing with a guy that's, I, I've done thirty years in prison. Wow. Um, I've not been in society long. So if you add up all the years that I've been in society compared to what I've been in, in prison, it, my prison time is going to outweigh what I've been out here in society. I try to carry myself in a manner in which um, it doesn't depict that I've come from that lifestyle, but man, I'm fucked up. Real talk. I mean, I can just get straight to it. I've been around so much corruption and ill shit and wicked shit and negative shit that it, it take it is it, it is it's you have to be strong in order to overcome those things and then uh 
be able to pre prevail in spite of it all. I mean, like, it, it, it's a lot of nights I couldn't cry. It's a lot of nights I did cry. I mean, like, at the end of the day, man, I went to prison at 18, and I went in there, and I was sentenced to 5 to 20. Five years, I was supposed to do no less than five, no more than 20. I did 20 years. I did 19 years and some months exactly before they released me. I got flopped by the parole board 11 times. I went in there 18 years old as a kid. So I had to go in at a time where it was still very volatile. And at that time, when I went to prison in 1987, shit, I, I got volatile right with right along with the program, right along with it. Right, what, what you right go to prison with, for? If, I went to prison for armed robbery. Man, like you know, nobody was was hurt in the situation, or like you know, no, and they, no, and they no. gave you 19 years for that. That sounds egregious. No, they didn't give me 19 years. This is what they gave me. They gave me, they gave me three years and three to twenty for the for the armed robbery, plus two years for the gun. So we just say five to twenty. That means I'm I wasn't supposed to do no less than five yeah. and, and no more than no 20. More than 20 yeah. But my my institutional behavior is what my institutional behavior is what deemed what the what the what the parole board or any powers that be would say, look at this record, my my prison record, the tickets that I caught, the things that I that I engaged in, or the things that I I was set up, even even when I was set up by police, all that is my files. My files are very thick. So with my files being very thick, then every time right, I went you're to not, the you're board, not getting parole, like you know, exactly I go to the parole board, they just bop me in the head. Just like if you ever watched the movie uh Shawshank Redemption, the same way they did Red. Every time Red went to the parole board, they, they kept bopping him in the head. And so you get to the point to where you just don't even care no more. Like, like you really don't even care. It's like, I don't even care about no outside existence because I lost everything really anyway. My grandmother died. My grandfather died. You know, I mean, I'm in prison. So, you know, when you don't get letters for 11 years or you haven't had a physical visit in 11 years, it was, 11, I had an 11 year period that I didn't have no physical visit. So at the end of the day, you start not caring about society and you just, your world is inside of here. Or inside of the, you know, the prison walls. That's where your world is. Man, that's um very like you know sad. I'm sorry that you had to go through that. You know, um what you know, do you feel like you learned something from that experience? Oh yeah, I learned a whole lot of stuff. I learned how to I learned how to fish under a door, use a dental floss, you know what I'm saying? I, I could be in a tight situation. We might be locked in a room and we can get some dental floss. And then guess what? If we don't got no dental floss, if it's any piece of clothing in here, we all we got to do is tear the seams apart. We could tear a pair of blue jeans up and get the, the thread out of their blue jeans and use that like dental floss, slide it up the crack of the dough and unlock the dough if we get locked up in this bitch. You feel me? Like it's different little shit. You can learn instead of panicking and not worrying about shit when it really, all you got to do is just take a deep breath and deal with that shit. Shit, the slaves had to do it. So, you know, we definitely had to do it. When, in, in any situation you get in, you gotta deal with it. Or you or you can or you can fuck up and 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 and, and be a fuck boy. Who wanna do that? Right, right, <laughs> right. Me. You were saying, like, you know, um about like going 11 years without having a physical visit. Like, you know, uh what ended up happening? Like, how did you eventually get a visit? Like, you know, did somebody here from your family like reach out after that, that period? No, or? I'm saying, I'm saying like, I'm saying like there, there came a time in my life in 1994, they, they sent me up north. I went up north to an up north prison, all the way up north. I'm talking about the upper peninsula of Michigan. Yeah. So when you look at the map and you see the mitten, the, it's the top part of the mitten. Yeah, it's yeah. another part that goes across the top. That's the UP. They send you up to the UP and then they send you all the way to the end of that bitch down there, down there by Milwaukee, Wisconsin, somewhere. You feel me? So you so far away from your people that like who coming up, who coming way up there? Nobody's really coming way up there. It's 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 rare, you know. Guys get visits, guys have family members that come, or you got a girl or something, and your girl to make her way. That's a that's a trip, though. It's a journey. That's over 11 hours. That's like to get to the bottom of the UP. Coming from Detroit is eleven hour drive. That's the same amount of time it takes to get to Atlanta. So you know, I was up north from from two from ninety four all the way to two thousand to, to two thousand four. Ten years. I was up north for like ten years. Eleven. Wow. Eleven. And then, like, I guess you got yep. transferred back closer to Detroit. 
Is that? Yeah, I got tra- I got transferred back down. I I, I finally got I, I they finally worked my security level down to a level four, and like <laughs> I finally got worked down to a level four, and they sent me to a, a prison in Jackson called Cotton. I went to Cotton, and I got to, to Cotton level four. It was it was sweet because it was for me. You get to get out your cell three times a day. I, I I just came from level five. I did fifteen years in level five max. I did three years in level six maximum, super maximum. For so you know, I mean, so to get down to a part of in, in jail where they let you out your room and they got microwaves in this bitch, I was like, ah oh, man, what the <laughs> fuck? You feel me? Like damn, I would have been trying to get in one of these motherfuckers. Yeah, like, you know, I mean, that seems like a better, like, way of living. Like, I know exactly what you're uh, talking about. I never spent that much time. The longest I ever did was, like, 11 months. And um, before that, I did, like, four months. And then I got, I did, like, a couple, like, 30-day stints and stuff. But, like, you know, when you're talking about years, you know, I mean, that's, like, a different different level, like, of um, pain, I would imagine. You know, uh, you know, uncertainty because, like, you know, even like you know and stuff is is it's a dangerous environment you know anything can happen anytime is no like you know necessarily warning where you like ever like you know going through periods where you were like you didn't know how you were gonna make it like you know what i mean and stuff some people and stuff like that i've seen people commit suicide in jail like i've seen people like you know um you know just give up you know like yeah. and stuff like everything like you know how, how did you keep your faith Hey, I'm 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 with you, my bro. I'm just walking around. Yeah. I need can I get I need a uh, blunt, bro. That when we get time. Yeah, but see the the people that do what you just said, far as like um giving up and committing suicide in a prison settings, it be it be more. It it be so much weighing on the person. Now I look at all the situations I've seen like that, and those situations that I've seen, it's always been like. It's always been like, I don't know. I guess you just look at them as weak. You know what I'm saying? You look at them as weak. But like I'm talking about the us as spectators. When you hear about it, we be like, damn, Blase Speed hung himself, or Blase Speed killed himself. He took some pills. Be like, damn, what? Damn, man. And you usually you'd be like, damn, must have been a bitch. You know what I'm saying? That's the first thing. You don't think about it was the prison shit, especially if he would not. If he was a nigga that was getting raped or something, you'll be like, oh yeah, that's. You know, the straw broke the camel's back with all them boys fucking around with him or whatever, you know, but prison that's prison gossip. So sometimes you just mind your own business and stay out of other motherfuckers' business and mind your own with your people mm-hmm. and do what you do, you know? Yeah, but even, like, you know, like, I think, like, sometimes it's stuff, like, maybe it doesn't get to a level where, like, somebody's gonna kill themselves. You see, like, you know, people who, like, maybe mm-hmm. had, like, probably, like, a, a decent spirit where, like, you know, being in mm-hmm. prison, it affects it affects their emotion and you can see it. Like, they carry that. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, uh, where, like, you know, it's like, they it's, it's changed them as a person and, like, you know, made them, you know, maybe a little bit depressed. You know, where it's like, you know, maybe, like, you you necessarily uh if you, if you if you if you pay attention you'd be like yo like you know what I'm saying stuff it's just really like affecting them being here Man, shit. I mean what you're saying is true prison do affect us it's, it affected me I know it affected me I, yeah, I, I yeah. told you the beginning of this conversation I'm fucked up you feel me yeah but I'm in control of myself see the incredible hulk was fucked up too yeah David Banner was fucked up Dr. David Banner he created a monster to decide itself. So he had to learn how to control that bitch because he ain't wanna he ain't wanna be that. He ain't wanna be that. Yeah, yeah. So I had to learn how to control what I don't want to be. And I'm cool. I'm cool, but that's that's a crazy part. Man, because so- see, actually, I became that last night briefly because I, I, I couldn't see y'all. Yeah, I only saw my own fucking face and nothing else. So I'm trying to picture what I'm hearing and what I'm hearing, and I'm blown too. All I'm hearing is Nazis. <laughs> right. I'm hearing you talk, so I'm hearing you, and you sound like a European. So I'm thinking, okay, this white motherfucker on here, I'm, I'm all the way on somewhere else. <laughs> that's that's, lame. But, um, but, but when I heard what I heard, and that's I see, my girl was the one that pulled you up right quick. She was like, she was like, she said, uh-uh, babe, he the truth. She was saying that in the background. That's why I was like, hold up, what? He the truth. I looked, she was showing me, she was showing me the pictures and showing me videos and shit. And, and when she said, 
Hold on. This nigga is laying right in front of the dope boy. Hold on. Thanks, babe. You hear me? Yeah, I can still hear you. Oh, uh, man. No, no, I was talking. Oh, Move. Okay. Get back. I don't know. Yep. You said there? There you go. You're back. There we go. You got okay. it. Yeah, you're back. Uh, yeah. Man, so like, you know, you you eventually get out. What was it like transitioning back into like regular society? Cause I see like now, like you're a man and stuff, you're using Zoom, you're on Instagram. When you went away, like none of that existed. Like, you know, was it like, you know, you have to learn like technology over again? Like how how do you, you know? Yeah, I'm learning every day. Every day I learn, you know, I'm learning. Like I was just stuck right just now. I was, I don't know, I couldn't even see. I'm up here pushing buttons, holding the weed. I'm trying to get the button right. Then I see it at the bottom. Oh, I can slide it back and forth. Boom, it got your name down there too. So. But I'm I'm just learning every day, man. My I got you know my girl helped me, you know anybody. A lot of people help me. My nephews, just people in general, man. I ain't scared to ask for no help, but I catch on pretty quick. You know what I'm saying? I just watch shit, man. I watch people anyway, you know. Watch motherfuckers. That's all. Man, uh, what are, what are you trying to do now? Like you know, I mean, and stuff. Now that you got your freedom, uh, how long have you been free too? Well, on this last bit. I mean, I did 20 years on my first bit. I stayed out for two years. I went back. I did five years for gun possessions. They found some guns in my house. So that was five years after the 20 years. I did the five years. I came home. I stayed home for five years. And then I caught a case here in Ohio. It was a drug case, a trafficking case. I got three and a half years for that. Damn. I've been out. I've been out for two years now. I've been out for two years, two years and about a, like a couple months now. Like I'm really, I'm really working on staying out. Like I got a different mind state now. Like I really want to hustle. See, like when I was out, when I was out in 2014, from 2014 till I got locked up, that five years I was out, I started creating myself as Mr. Go-To. So see, that's where that's where everybody know me from. Right. When I started creating myself as Mr. Go-To, working in the, all the clubs, like I really had my foot in the dough and everything in Detroit. If anybody want to challenge it, ask, all you got to do is ask ask God and them. They'll tell you. My record, my record, my I, I was I was man, I was doing podcasting really low key before anybody. I was doing this shit, man. When when like I was taking it to the next level, I said I'm the Black Howard Stern. I'm Mr. Go To, aka the Black Howard Stern. I was trying to go somewhere else with it. Nobody was podcasting. I Nobody know. in the city, man. A couple niggas playing on the radio, but like when it come to like really doing it, it was me. We was with Sound Tube Nation. We was with um um um. We was with a uh, 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 raw raw talent radio. Um, we was with um, even a uh, worldwide core. I started out with worldwide core radio. So shout out to all those spots that I fucked around with, man. I, you know that you know, but sometimes you have to grow, elevate, move on. So you know, but those is all my beginnings. You know what I'm saying? And so when I look at my 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 position, I was selling my own clothes. I had hush money clothing. Everybody know I had the hush money. Um, and right now, man, I'm finna just take a look at everything I've done. Oh, acting. I was in the movie Hood Chicks back then. Yeah. Back then, we talked about back then. You feel me? Hood chicks ain't new. That's old. Really? Yeah. Anybody who just not getting up on it, that's old. So I've been doing, I've been wearing a whole lot of hats. Then I was bodyguarding, bodyguarding entertainers, working at the clubs. My foot was in all the doors necessary in the game out there, bro. I mean, it really was, man. Shit, I ain't gonna talk you to death, though. No, that's what we here for, man. Like, uh, what was it like being in the movie Hood Chicks? What, what was the uh, role you played? I played the role of Marty McFly. And that character is the character where um, the girl Angel tries to finesse me for $5,000, a $5,000 check. 
So I own a hot dog company and she comes to the company and she tries to, you know, pitch, you know, give me her pitch on why I should give them $5,000. And because she so looks so scrumptiously delicious to me, I, I, I want to give her that 5,000. And, and, and I tell my man when she, when she leaves out the room, I tell him I'm a, I'm a, I'm a tongue punch that girl's fart box. <laughs> and that's, that's the line that everybody, they go crazy over that line. That's, that's, that, that was that, that was that character. That was me and that character. So that's like when you go on hood chicks, it's like 14 minutes in, 15 minutes in. That's from my that's no, it might be 23. I forgot. But anyway, it's 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 not right at the beginning. It ain't at the at the end. I'm like right towards right, right towards the, the first part of you know, the first quarter of the movie. Man, that's cool. Like uh Detroit, like you know, they're really known for like, you know, the movies on Tubi. Right now, like I feel like, you know, uh, it's a lot of like really like talented like filmmakers and stuff coming out of Detroit specifically. You hoping to do some more movies and stuff in, in, on? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm I'm also in another movie called The Come Up. I'm in The Come Up. I play a police in that movie. Oh, uh, I'm in the, I'm in Street Legal. That, that's a new that's a new web series that just came out um, under Dennis Reed, uh, season six. Um, uh, uh, I mean, no, excuse me, episode six of season one, Street Legal. I'm in that. Um, uh, what what role do you play in Street Legal? I'm just I'm just in the background. I'm just I'm just happen to be sitting in the in the in the courtroom while they're in court. So, but but I got to credit that to my resume. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. It yeah. wasn't even an acting scene. It was just me sitting right behind the, one of the main lawyers in the movie. She while she's delegating and talking, I'm sitting right behind her while she's talking. So you can see me right there in the background. For sure, for sure. Like man, um, what's next for you? Um, I, it's so much that I want to do, man. I got a clothing line that I want to start. Um, so I want to really push my clothing line to make it a brand as opposed to just, you know, so I got the clothing line, um, podcasting and, and acting, acting, acting is, you know, definitely on the floor and I want to get, you know, heavy off into the podcasting and they trying to give me a title and they give me a label, a label that, you know, that I didn't ask for, but you gotta call me the gatekeeper. Okay. Of, of podcasting. You know what I'm saying? And shit. I, I I feel like I put in enough work, man. I feel like I, I know one thing for sure. I know I recognize real from fake. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I and, and I immediately, if I'm wrong, I can correct myself immediately. Like I ain't trying to like be disrespectful, but I definitely ain't got no problem with getting disrespectful. You feel me? No, nah, so, I'm I want. I'm glad you. I'm glad you handled yourself properly because I was all the way misconstrued, and so I was off point. And like I said, I immediately confronted that, corrected that right there in public where it transpired at, not behind closed doors on the phone. Nah, in public, because you know I could. Because that could have been embarrassing. What I said, you know what I'm saying? Because I misread. So now I know what it is. Well, I, I appreciate you saying that. Like I, you know, like um. I try, like, you know what I mean, and stuff everything to interact, like, peacefully with people, like, you know, for, like, the uh, the most part, like, that's why, like, I feel like the situation with Talib Kweli is so, he's so outrageous, you know what yeah. I mean, and stuff everything, and, like, you know, for him to call, like, Gutter and, like, you know, uh, Blatonio Todd, like, you know, and stuff like white supremacists and stuff everything, and, you know, that that hurts their image, you know, these are good people, man, like, I, I, I take them in the racial draft you know, they can have Candace Owens and Brandon Tatum and stuff. Give us gutter and, uh, you know, Blatonio Todd, man. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, but like, I, I think like, you know, um, it's about being responsible. You don't have to like disparage people or like, you know, if I, if I, if I don't like, you know, like uh, what you have to say or who you are as a person, I could choose like, you know what I mean? And stuff not to go on your page, not to do Zooms with sure. you. You don't have to. You don't have to interact with people and stuff. Everything that you you're not feeling their vibe and stuff. But I I, I enjoy your vibe, man, and you're real. So like you know, I recognize real people and stuff. I, I don't um as far as though like I don't have no animosity towards Talib Kweli. He's a great artist, but like why why come on my page and lie about me? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, man. See the thing is sometimes, man. I think people, man, they be they be they be kind of haughty in a position. See, I always. I always just figured he was a positive, productive guy, and that's it. I I ain't no fan to that degree. Yeah. I know he just made you know what I'm saying. I ain't no fan of nothing. 
So at the end of the day, when I hear that a person like that is intermingling with the, I, I just say, you know, if it was a hierarchy, we the lower part of hip hop. You you up top. What you dealing? You should be dealing with Diddy and all of them. You should be talking to you like, what are you talking to me about? Why are you trying to put your foot on my neck? Because I'm down here. I'm one of the little people. You feel me? Yeah. But guess what? You fuck with a motherfucker, little person. He got a whole lot of motherfuckers behind him. So now, what you talking about, my baby? See, I ain't just a regular motherfucker. And yeah. then if and then if he thought that he was just dealing with you, now you 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 got other attachments now. So. With your attachments now that you don't you don't even know the, the magnitude. That's why I told Gutter yesterday when I said he don't even know Dewey Southwest. He was like, nah, you don't even know. You really don't even know the magnitude of what you got really with you now on the fourth side. You feel me? Because it's there whether you yeah, realize I, it. I appreciate it, man. Like, yeah, I um, you know, I just want to put out positivity, bro. Like, you know what I mean? I don't like, you know, um, Man, hey, listen. Jesus told the temple. Jesus told the temple up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. Man, so, um, I mean, you know, listen. I said I went to prison at eighteen years of age. I ain't come out that bitch till I was thirty eight. When I came out at thirty eight, bro, I ain't even know how to. I ain't know how to pay no bills through Walmart or none of that shit. Right. You feel me? I ain't know how to do none of that shit. So at the end of the day, you know, when everything I'm going through is learning experiences, everything, all my journey been a straight up learning experience. So when I be talking, I don't be having time to talk about no bullshit. I, we can laugh and play and all that shit. You know, everybody says I should be a comedian. Yeah, maybe so. But, man, I want to be a mentor. I want to be a motivational speaker. I want to go out and I want to do some tours. I want to make money doing this shit. And I want to take with me a motherfucking squad of motherfuckers that motherfuckers going to understand and believe. Because at the end of the day, that's all they're interested in. So we can't ride no wave and put... we. You can't be the face. You're too intellectual. You're too, you're too not, they're not going to want to listen. Yeah. If you came on the screen right now and tell the world, hey, everybody listen up. I got to tell you guys something. And you start speaking. Eventually, they're not going to listen. They're going to think you crazy. <laughs> if I come on that bitch smoking some weed, like, what up, though? Hey, <laughs> listen up. The world about to blow up, dog. I'm telling you motherfuckers now, y'all better get y'all, hey, y'all, woo, woo, you feel me? Yeah, yeah, they yeah, gonna yeah. listen. It's an attraction. Uh, they, they, it's just the attraction that you have to trick them. You got to trick them into whatever it is. To when when we do when we trick them, they be so far so far involved that now when you come on the screen, I show you as this is the person who taught me. Now they're gonna listen. You man, see what I'm saying? I feel you. Yeah, man. We got like uh, about like six minutes left. You know, um, I wanted to ask you about Derek Chauvin, you know, the person, police officer, he took the life of George Floyd. He was recently stabbed 22 times in prisons. Uh, do you have any thoughts about that? Did he die? No, nah, he's still alive. Like, you know. Damn. You know, Damn. Yeah, uh, people people are speculating he, he, he may get a compassionate release, possibly. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, that's just like, you know, a rumor. You know, because like, you know, he, he got stabbed. He got th about three years left. You know, um, he was stabbed by a member of the Mexican mafia, I believe. You know, uh, but like they, they didn't kill him because the guards responded pretty quickly. So. Well, my, my response to that is this. <clears throat> a lot of people that have done wrong in society. Their judgment has been claimed. And, and dealt with by way of them coming to prison. And everybody's content with that. Like a lot of people have raped people, killed people and, and, and came to prison and prison has dealt with those people. So people that do wrong in society get dealt with in prison. The guys who tried to rape Rosa Parks, those guys got dealt with. Is the world mad about that? What do y'all, what do you want? What do we want? Do we want justice or not? If we want justice for George Floyd, he was killed by a man who took his life unnecessarily so. So somebody attempted to try to take his life in a prison setting, that's the day in the life of prison, man. That is the day in life of prison. What does he expect? And for him to be released early because of that, then if that's the case, Everybody who ever been stabbed in prison should get early releases, bro. 
He ain't the only motherfucker that's been stabbed 22 times. What? And live? As I said, did he live? Because I know a bunch of motherfuckers that get stabbed repeatedly over and over and over, and they still alive. And they still doing life or doing time. Yeah. And if I, you say he's about to get released in three years, man, listen, we can talk all day, man. You can't put me on no on no time limit. We gotta get on the we gotta get on where we can we need to record. Yeah. Uh, I want to record. Man, we this is recorded. I'm talking about I want to record without being interrupted. You say we only oh, got yeah, a few yeah, seconds. Yeah. Oh, for sure, for sure. Uh like you and me, I'll get the uh you like I, I've always had like the free zoom because it's like it's uh, the limit is like 40 minutes. Zoom used to be free at like one point, but then like they like during the pandemic, they started charging because so many people started using it. Like I like okay. I use Zoom, like I would tell people about Zoom. Professor Griff actually told me about Zoom. And so like I was like, man, this is pretty cool. So I just started doing Zoom. Then the pandemic started and like everybody started doing Zoom. And then they were like, you know, uh, it wasn't no more time limits. Like if you look back at like some of my older interviews, like six years ago, I was like, you know, it would be like maybe like an hour and a half and stuff. I talked to people, but then like, yeah. like it, they cap it off at like 40 minutes for the free version. You got to pay for the, uh, the unlimited, the unlimited. Okay. Man. Um, I wanted to ask you, I don't know if you watched the NBA. Have you heard about this situation with Josh Giddy for the Oklahoma city thunder? You know, he's like allegedly he had sex with like an underage girl. She was like, you know, approximately like 16 years of age. She lives in California where the uh, legal age of consent is 18. You know, a lot of people in the media like, you know, are being called out like, you know, specifically like Malika Andrews for like, you know, they're saying he's getting a pass because he's white. You know, like. Uh, you got any Well, how, how old is he? Uh, I think. He's 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 got to be like you know twenty one, you know at least he, like you know, yeah. Listen, 21. listen. If, if I don't even know about the situation, but the situation is he's getting a pass, then he's getting a pass because of his race. Obviously, it's it's because if he was black, they'd be clipping him. He wouldn't be in the NBA. He'd be they would be ostracized. But see, here's the thing: we have to understand this, man. First of all. How have we even lost so? How have we lost so much so that we are letting our six, our sixteen year old daughters are going out here and prostituting themselves or being caught up in situations with men? We got to tighten up as men, man. That's we got to tighten up as men. We got to tighten up in our communities. We letting too much shit go on. We not answering. We not being accountable. I can't walk into no room and see no little young kid and be like, what up, though? And she'd be like, hey. And be like, well, who, who she in here with? Who, what's up with this? I automatically know that she's not a woman. I know she a kid. Her whole vibration gonna let me know she a kid. So if I'm around, I'm the type of motherfucker that'd be like, whoa. That, so don't do that shit in front of me. That's all I'm saying. If I catch it, I'm gonna say something like, damn, my baby, what you got going on there? Hey, that's, that's a little mama, ain't she? I'm 54, man. Yeah. I don't got no room to be playing with no kids, you feel me? Yeah, yeah. Or being or or being around nobody that's playing with no kids or none of that weird shit, man. None of that weird shit, man. We don't support none of that. We ain't on none of that. We red, yeah. black, and green all day, man. And, and, and red, you see, and you see, that's day. that's my that's my uh contention with Talib Kwali, though. Like, you know, uh, because my my wife is of age, you know what I mean? So like you're you're gonna say I'm a groomer, I'm a pedophile, I have kids. You see what I'm saying? Like, why would yeah. they issue with that? But like, man, uh, where can people follow you on social media? Um, you can follow me on I'm on, on uh YouTube. I mean, excuse me. I am actually on YouTube, but on YouTube, you have to follow me up on 